from Worcester, Mass. First round action in the NCAA tournament on the second day of March Madness this evening. We focus on the Austin bracket. Our first game of the evening, Vermont versus Syracuse. And a look at the Austin bracket. The winner of this game will take on the winner of our next game here in Worcester between Michigan State and ODU. Everybody, Gus Johnson, along with Len Elmore, tell me about this one, partner. Well, we got two combinations here, inside-out combinations. Obviously, you know McNamara and Warwick of Syracuse, national champs a couple of years ago. But Sorrentine and Coppenrath dominated the America East for Vermont. We'll see if they belong. All right, let's take a look at the coaches. Tom Brennan in his 19th and final season as the head coach at Vermont. His team coming in with a 24-6 record. And how about Taylor Coppenrath? He is second in the nation in scoring at close to 26 per game. On the other sideline, one of the great coaches in all of college basketball, Jim Beheim, 29 years. He has his national championship in his back pocket looking for another. And his lineup, Hakeem Warwick, the Big East Player of the Year. And keep your eye on the man they call G-Money, Jerry McNamara. He can shoot it with the best. As we take a look at the officials, tonight's game is brought to you in high-definition television by Harris Corporation, the world leader in broadcast systems for high-definition TV. Syracuse, Vermont, Worcester. Here we go. And the jack controlled by Vermont. Sorrentine. And there's Syracuse in that back to 2 3 zone. And they certainly play it more than just a passing zone. No extend, no trap in the corner. They even match up a little bit. Keep people honest and always continue to play tough. Inside, knocked away by Ford, into the hands of Josh Pace. Here comes Pace, who does all the little things for the world. It's interesting that Josh Pace is bringing the ball up and handling it. Usually that's McNamara, but I think there's been a concerted effort to get McNamara more in the offense and give Pace that responsibility to make plays. Roberts, off the mark. Sorrentine into the front court. Again, whenever you see a green shirt flash in, Syracuse will match up with that green shirt. They're not just playing a passive zone and sitting back and allowing people to catch the ball. McNamara in transition, the runner off the back rim. Mokajila with the rebound. Both teams got a little bit of jitters right now. They're missing shots that would normally be a lot closer. Just feeling each other out. What's the key? You've seen Syracuse play for years. What's the key to busting this Syracuse zone? Well, obviously, one of them is to move the ball, get it so that the defense is moving side to side and creating some gaps that you can drive. Also, there are sweet spots, a short corner below the free throw line, but you need guys who are nifty just like that. Beautifully done. Stop it around. Thanks it in. And I think they were listening to you, Lenny. Well, Clement's did a nice job of getting there, and you've got to read the back guy. If he comes up on you, you've got to get around him. Well, you got to throw the ball around him. If he backs up, you got to be willing to take that 12-footer. Warwick off the dribble. Force one up and a five. This one going against Klemesh. His first. We'll take a look right here. Klemesh is going to receive the ball right in the little sweet spot at the top. Here he is flashing right here. And then you see fourth comes up. The middle guy comes up, so you read him, and you try to get the ball around him, either drive or pass. So Hakeem Warwick at the free throw line. What a great player. The senior averaging 21 points per game. And eight rebounds. And he's had some big games this season. And he's had them pretty recently towards the end of the season. I was there at the Providence game. That was senior day. 36 points. Uh, he is tremendous down around the blocks. And in the Big East tournament, he showed that he can shoot the three at one point. In a single game, he had more threes than Jerry McNamara in that game. And the semifinal against Connecticut stepped out with a couple of threes from straight away. Demetrius Nichols has checked in. Game tied at two. Syracuse a number four. 
Vermont a number 13. Vermont showing patience on the offensive end. Well, you have to. Again, the idea is to go inside out, side to side, force that defense to extend where there are gaps. Sorrentine. Loose ball rebounded by the Catamounts, and it's tapped home. Looks like Mopajila got a hand on it. Vermont taking a 4-2 lead. And don't forget, we will get you to the games you're interested in as soon as they tip off. And a travel on the baseline. Warwick shuffling his feet. Well, it's interesting that Vermont has chosen to play Akeem Warwick with just one man. And I think throughout the night, if they continue, Syracuse continues to go to Warwick, you're going to realize they're going to have to double-team him. Warwick just too quick, too long for anybody on the Vermont team. Top and Rath dumps it down low. Lamesh off the mark, and a jump ball is the call. The possession arrow in the favor of the Orange. It's not often you're going to get those type of clean opportunities to the rim against this zone, and when you do, you got to connect. That was just a missed layup. Martin Clemesh, a sophomore from the Czech Republic, his hometown, the city of Prague. Here's Jerry McNamara, the high pick and roll, the runner, count it. And that's a shot Jerry's worked on throughout this year, really hadn't shown it until around February. Clemesh inside, great ball fake, got Nichols in the air. And we'll go to the line. You know, we talked about Josh Pace being the point guard and McNamara trying to get involved in the offense. And he's developed some shots. He knows people are playing him now at the three-point line, forcing him inside the arc. And he's developed a shot to complement that defense. That defense pushes him in. He's got something to go with it. So Clemesh gets the first one to go. And he's a terrific student. As a matter of fact, he's the top business student at the university as a sister that played at Vandy. She played in the NCAA tournament, second free throw, no. Looks like a lane violation called against Syracuse. So Flamesh gets one more chance. And it's good. 6-4, Vermont. Out of the America East Conference. Syracuse, out of the Big East. McNamara, the crossover runner. Weak side rebound to Mopajila. Here comes Sorrentine. The little guy from Pawtucket. Sorrentine off the dribble. Sorrentino not able to get through those gaps. He's looking for ways to get inside. And they turn it over. Terrence Roberts intercepting the pass. And again, here's Josh Pace handling the ball, starting the offense. He was tremendous against UConn and West Virginia. Syracuse turns it over, but he got inside the defenses, penetrated, did a lot of the things, made plays that McNamara wasn't able to do. Coppenrath stepping in the passing lane. They dump it down. Coppenrath rejected. Oh. Nichols sends it out of bounds. And we've got a timeout on the floor. 15-16 to play in the first half. Vermont, the lower seed, with a two-point lead. Conference call. Well, with the Big East having six teams in, as we see, only Pittsburgh which was the lower seed in relationship to Pacific, lost. Syracuse playing right now, and everyone else prevailed, survived, and move on. And don't forget, for those of you expecting to see Delaware State and Duke, we will get you to your tip shortly. Syracuse so far starting this game one of five from the field. Here's Coppenrath. Averaging 25 a game. Great ball fake rejected by Warwick. Out of bounds. Copperrath calling for a goaltend. I'm not so sure he's seen guys flying in the air like this in America East. Here you get a nice ball fake. Gets Roberts off the floor, and that's a good call right there. A good no call by the official. Ball still on its way up. Clemesh, high arc. Short. 
And that is a shot clock violation. Now, so except, Syracuse gets it back. Sorry, Gus, except for those two shots, Vermont's been getting the ball inside, which is what you have to do against this type of zone. Get it inside, force that zone to collapse, then you can kick it out for open shot. But they missed two layups aside from the ones that connected. McNamara, quick release. Rebounded Mopajila. Vermont doing a nice job of blocking off. Guys are flying to the basket. Mopajila with five rebounds to start already. He's the senior from Cameroon. Very unsung guy. Talk about Sorrentino, talk about Coppin Rath, but Mopajila does all the dirty work. Coppin. All the little things. Five on the shot clock. Mopajila to Coppin Rath. He's got to hurry. And, uh... Well, that was a difficult shot. Again, force Coppin Rath to lean a fade away from the basket as he had to put that one up in fear of violation of shot clock. Ball knocked out of bounds will stay right here. People get, compare him to a poor man's Larry Bird, but he reminds me of a Jack Sigma type. Well, he hasn't had a chance to turn and do that Sigma move, and, you know, I wouldn't do that to the young man make comparisons to Larry Bird. I wouldn't do that to anybody in the game right now. That's just not fair. Ward missing. Here comes Vermont. Sorrentine and Nichols gets back, picks him up. Syracuse one of seven from the field. I mean, look how far out Vermont is, looking to try to extend that defense. Syracuse not taking the bait, they're staying pretty much packed in. Opajila, the kick, Sorrentine sets his feet. Loose ball. Once again, Mopajila with a rebound. He has six. And yesterday, from that wing, Mopajila hit a number of jump shots in practice. Doppenrath off the mark. Nichols. 12.46 to play in the first half. Syracuse, the number four seed, taking on Vermont, the number 13 seed. And right now, Vermont with an 8-7 lead. Vermont able to get into some of the gaps right now, just like that. Mopajila dribbles between two defenders, and they are able to get some shots inside, make some layups. They've gotten the numbers and blocked, but there's no back down in Vermont right now. They're playing this thing as if they belong with the national champs of a couple years ago. McNamara off the mark, loose ball. And Mopajila with another rebound is seven. And Mopajila is the key right now. He is definitely holding his own on the board despite giving up a number of inches. Mopajila 6'4 against guys 6'8, 6'9, and 6'10 on that front line. Top and Rath looking weak side. And a timeout called. 11.52 to play. Vermont up 10-7. Here's a look at the tournament summary. Well, obviously, the seeds have held service in the top four. And we've got a bunch of shining moments here. Anthony Roberson played hero, as he always has for Florida. Charlie Villanueva that we saw here in Worcester is really fulfilling his promise. And Darren Brooks leads his team, Southern Illinois, to victory. Connecticut led the game with Central Florida by 19, but the Golden Knights made it interesting, cutting it to five. There's Sorrentine, Lamesh, Jensen, Sorrentine way out. The shot clock is running down again. Vermont using time off the clock, but maybe more than they'd like. Here they are trying to get the ball in the short corner. And Topperrath showing he can handle it a little bit. Dribbles out of that double team. So I think Vermont probably in practice has worked against this 2-3, but they could never have envisioned how active it is. It's really making them take a lot of time off that clock. It is very uncomfortable here. For a match offensive rebound, but it goes off of his knee. However, T.J. Sorrentine, 0 for 5 to start. Vermont holds on to a three-point lead.
Vermont with a 10-7 lead over Syracuse. 11 4 to play in the first half. Gus Johnson, Len Elmore, and your assessment of what's taken place so far. Well, Vermont has an eight-rebound advantage over Syracuse, including five offensive rebounds, and that's the key. You have to be able to rebound against the 2-3 zone. Those five offensive rebounds have given Vermont second-chance opportunities. That's helped them get the lead. And if you remember, Syracuse, not really known to be a strong rebounding team, as fourth gets tied up, actually he travels. Fourth turnover of the first half for the Orange. In their six losses, Syracuse has been out rebounded by an average of 10 rebounds per game. But in the last three, you think they've changed their attitudes because they turned the tables and out rebounded opponents by 10 in these last three games, including 50 rebounds against Connecticut in the Big East tournament. So, you know, you're wondering which Syracuse team on the glass is showing up. Hain, Mopajila, Coppenwath, along with Jensen and Klamesh on the court for the Catamounts. That one on the floor, picked up by Jerry McNamara. McNamara on the break, finds pace. The kick out, Nichols. Got it. Well, it was about time Demetrius Nichols had really stepped up. He's a terrific shooter, but he had been slumping, particularly from beyond the arc recently, 23%. But he can shoot it. And he's one of those sophomores that Jim Beheim looks to and says, we will go as far as our sophomores take us. One night it's Terrence Roberts. Right now, it's Demetrius Nichols. Nichols with two threes in this game, has six points. Inside, top and wrap, lefty, no, fourth clears it. McNamara and Warwick, a combined one of six. That was a bad pass by Jerry McNamara. Not often does he do that. He tried to throw a bounce pass, and you know this floor is dead. The ball doesn't bounce up as it would on normal floors, as we would consider it. And the dead floor doesn't allow good passes on the bounce. CBS Sports Line keeps you on top of all the men's NCAA tournament action. Get real-time bracket updates and expert picks for each and every first-round game. It's all at CBSSportsLine.com. And you remember, Gus, at practice, a lot of people were complaining there are dead spots on the floor. And I think Jerry McNamara's bounce pass hit one of those dead spots and never came up. You said it's like the Boston Garden. Yeah, I mean, it was great to jump off of, but the home team always knew where the dead spots were, and they funneled you there, and the next thing you know, the balls bounced on the floor and never came up. Hakeem Warwick knocks down his first field goal, and Syracuse has its first lead of the game, Warwick with four points. He's only attempted two shots. Top and wrath in traffic. He's surrounded. Draws a lot of attention. Sorrentine tries to deal it down. It's deflected and stolen. Makrosky in the game. And a whistle. He traveled. Six turnovers for Syracuse early. When you look at Warwick and McNamara, they haven't been able to get the ball. Obviously, Vermont pointing their defense towards both of those guys. And that's why it's so important to get that offensive diversity you get other people involved putting the ball in the basket and force the defenses to get honest. Vermont scoreless in the last four minutes. Now Coppenrath can't step out and hit that jump shot from 19 feet. He's tied up and we will stay on this end. Well, both teams, the big men particularly, are unfortunately bringing the ball down and putting it up for grabs. You know, instead of getting it in a position where they can power sweep through, and drive, they're just holding it down there and allowing the little guys to get a hand on it. Sorrentino for five, Schneider, a brick, Warwick with the weak side rebound. Warwick, 16 footer, count it. And see, that's the element of Hakeem Warwick's game that's really been developed over the last couple of weeks. You know, I saw him hit threes in the Big East tournament. He's really been able to step outside now, recognizing the teams are going to double him down on the block. And it's added a new dimension to his offense. His mother told you he could shoot it. That's right. Green just told us that the best thing about him that no one knows is his ability to shoot that jumper. And you know mom knows best. Schneider again. And some miscommunication for throwing it away. 
Coppin Rath tracks it down. New shot clock. Pull up jump shot. Off the mark for Hain. Vermont 0 for 7 from the three-point line. Nichols dumps it down to fourth, who lays it up and in. That's good team play right there. Demetrius Nichols putting it on the floor, drawing defenders and dishing off to the open man. 9-0 run for the Orange. 6.57 to play in the first half. 16-10 Syracuse. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, Greg Gumbel, Clark Kellogg, and Seth Davis will have a tournament update for you, live look-ins, plus the Naismith update. It's all coming up on Singular at the half. Vermont has yet to hit a three-pointer. Turn around, jump shot in the paint. Top and wrap with a very nice shooter's touch. And that's what you need in that spot below the free-throw line against the 2-3 zone. A guy who is willing to turn if the defender doesn't come up. The back line middle guy is willing to turn and hit that 12-footer. Nichols, the bounce pass inside, taken away by Mopajila. Eight turnovers for Syracuse in the first half. Sorrentine wants to get it going. He's scoreless. Syracuse in that zone, even though the ball's moving side to side, doing a much better job of closing up those gaps, not allowing any penetration. Top and right there off the miss, but Magrowski plucks it out of the air. McNamara bumped, leans in. Long, Magrowski with the offensive rebound. And you see right there, Vermont forced McNamara inside the line, inside the arc. But outside the arc, he is almost money. Knocked out of bounds, will head the other way. McNamara, one of seven to start. 16-12, Syracuse. Greg Dumble, Clark Kellogg, Seth Davis in New York. We'll get you back to Vermont and Syracuse in a moment. First, let's check out what's happening in Nashville, where the raging Cajuns of Louisiana Lafayette are taking on Louisville. And in this game, the Cardinals lead at 23-18. If Louisiana Lafayette is on their game, Clark, what are they doing right? Well, they'll handle the ball for one. They take care of the basketball, squeeze the orange, and then they get out and run and score in transition. They play pressure defense, but Orion Green, one of their starting guards and a key guy for them at both ends of the floor, has three fouls, and he's been out of the game since about the 11-minute mark. And Tyrus Wade, uh, Lafayette's leading scorer, over 20 points a game. There's Taekwon Dean trying to hit a three-pointer there, but uh, Louisville's done a great job on Wade, and, and Lafayette's made scores. Very underrated defensively is Louisville. All right, guys, they're in a timeout in Charlotte where the Delaware State Hornets have uh, stirred up a bee's nest and pulled even with Duke as well. <laughs> Very well said, Gregory. Well, Duke got a great lift with Sean Dockery, uh, who had injured his knee. He started for them, hit a couple three earlies, but J.J. Redick has yet to attempt a shot, and Coach K yanked him out of the lineup, put him on the bench, and maybe that'll light a fire. All right, guys, we'll keep track of all those games. Let's get you back to Worcester, Vermont, and Syracuse. Gus Johnson and Len Elmore. Five minutes remaining in the first half, and it's been a defensive battle for both teams. Both teams really digging in, obviously getting loose balls, creating turnover situations, and doing a nice job on the board, particularly Vermont. Okay, let's take a look at the game summary. Syracuse shooting 40%, Vermont 23% shooting. 5 of 22. As a team on the year, they shoot 44%. But what's keeping Vermont in the game are the eight Syracuse turnovers that's giving them extra opportunities, plus Vermont's ability to hit the offensive glass. Vermont's played man-to-man -man the entire game so far, and a reach and foul. This one coming up against David Hain. And that is the third team foul against Vermont. Josh Pace checks in. McCroskey heads to the bench. You know, at first blush, you look at it, Syracuse, perennial Big East power, national champs a couple of years ago, and you would think that the slow down pace, particularly on Vermont's offensive end, would benefit them, but it doesn't. This is a team that averages 73 points a game. So they want to run as well. So Demetrius Nichols caught for setting the screen. 
And for Nichols, that's his second. Third team foul against Syracuse. Kyle Saplicki, a freshman from Vermont, checks in the game. He wears number 14, can shoot it a little bit. And again, you see Sorrentine barking out orders. It's still having a lot of difficulty finding ways to get good shots. That's a long shot. You can get that anytime. Sorrentine really struggling. 0 for 6. And Syracuse turns it over again. Here's Sorrentine in transition. Penetrates. Hands it off to Coppenrath. Great cat. Pump fake. And he draws a foul. 3.49 to play. In the first half, Syracuse with the 16-12 lead. Fred Gumbel in New York, the Hornets of Delaware State, the 16th seed on a 13-1 run to grab the lead against Duke. Aaron Williams with the bucket on the nice pass, and it is a 16-13 lead. 11 and a half minutes to play in the first half. Let's go back. How about that Miak basketball? Wow. The Mid-Eastern <laughs> Athletic oh, Conference. It, wow. Trying to shock the world. Coppenrath at the free throw line. And there's that behind the head jump shot or shot. Sunday in spring break on CBS. Except this year, it's not safe to go in the water. The OC's Shannon Lucio stars in the world premiere of spring break shark attack. Sunday at 9, 8 central on CBS. Full court pressure now by Vermont. Broke it easily by Syracuse. Base, McNamara, fourth, Warwick, Nichols. Gus, the turnover story is this. Syracuse has 10 turnovers. And an well, now offensive 11. foul. Warwick picks up the foul. And for Hakeem, that's his first. Well, that's the 11th turnover for Syracuse as Warwick backs down. And he's got to be careful. You know guys are going to be flopping. They're going to do everything possible to get you in jeopardy. And Hakeem knows that. He's telling the officials that. And so is Jim Beheim. But that's the 11th Syracuse turnover. And even though Vermont has only been able to capitalize those four points, now six. What it's done indirectly is thrown Syracuse off their rhythm and given Vermont extra opportunities. Vermont on a 6-0 run to tie it up at 16. Pace kicks it out. Nichols looking, and he travels. Syracuse confused right now. They continue to turn the ball over. And here against the 2-3 zone, when you have an athlete like Mo Fragila, you have the ability to throw over it if he can sneak along that baseline. Syracuse with 12 turnovers in 17 minutes. 16 apiece. Sorrentine keeps firing. Finally, he buries one. And see what happens is, even if they're not converting on the turnovers, you're giving them more opportunities. Eventually, they get it, and they bury it. Taylor Coppenrath and T.J. Sorrentine, the dynamic duo for the Vermont Catamount. Sorrentine, a first-team all-conference selection in the America East three straight years. He's fifth in the, in the nation, and three-pointers made, 3.6 per game. Now Warwick backing his man down. Changed his shot, gets it back, and lays it in. I think he came Warwick very lucky that time that it wasn't another turnover. But Vermont doing an excellent job of staying on their feet, trying to take space away from the team Ward, making him put it on the floor, making him try to elevate over the defender. 2-12 to play in the first half. 19-18 Vermont. Opajila has been sensational on the boards. And he's had to because Coppenrath at 6-9 had zero rebounds in this game. Opajila loses it. Seven rebounds from Opajila. Well, the name of the game here is the turnovers by Syracuse. You take a look here. One, they just give it right to them. To Vermont, another, it's taken away. And the third, just shoddy ball handling. And as I mentioned before, Vermont now starting to convert those turnovers. But before, it's just the extra opportunities take away from Syracuse's ability to build the lead and give Vermont a little more confidence. Nice Pace. look. Pace. Laying it up. 
Warwick with the nice pass. And Syracuse reclaims the lead. Warwick has eight points. And now one assist as the Orange get back into the zone. You know, when you're playing a team that's not supposed to beat you, you're supposed to do everything you can to discourage them and not give them confidence. And the turnovers continue to give Vermont confidence. Nine on the shot clock. Bobagila's got to hurry. Bangs it off the rim. Coppenrath dives. He's tied up, and Syracuse will get the ball. Terrence Roberts jumping on him. And they call it a shot clock violation. Tom Brennan, four straight 20-win seasons. He's the winningest coach in Vermont history. His first three years, though, Lenny, he was 14 and 68. Well, I tell you, you know, it's all about the patience of athletic directors. That was the patience of Job right there until <laughs> Tom turned it around. But, I mean, you've seen it over and over again. How about Tom Butters, the former athletic director at Duke? Hanging in there with Mike Krzyzewski, who had a double-digit under 500 record for a while. You take a look right here. That's just a straight-up post-up ducking move by Ward, who just uses his athleticism and his length. Makes a nice turn there. I guess his defender cheating one way and takes the hit. And that's what Warwick has to do a little more of. Pick your spots. Don't try to be Humphrey Bogart and command the spot in there. Pick your spots, and you'll get your openings. Warwick with 10 points. Make it 11. 23-19. Syracuse with the lead under a minute to play. Sorrentine, Mopajila, Jensen, Coppenrath, Klamesh. Weak side, Sorrentine. Mopajila on the hop, the finger roll off the back rim. And what Syracuse is doing now is limiting Vermont on each possession to one and out. Vermont had been getting... You know, a sizable number of offensive rebounds get second and third opportunities, but Syracuse doing a much better job. Well, now they spread the floor, play for one shot. Shot clock turned off, game clock at 10. McNamara, who struggled in the first half. The kick out, Nichols has been good. That one missing to the right, and that is the end of the first half. Both teams struggling at times. But Syracuse leads it 23 to 19 at halftime. Syracuse shoots 9 of 20, 45 percent. Vermont 7 of 26, 26 percent. One of nine from the three-point line. Uh, here at halftime, we're going to give you a chance to see Delaware State take on Duke. CBS Sports. Exclusive coverage of the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. So you finally got that pickup truck. Too bad you didn't buy a Linex spray-on bed liner. Linex's non-slip surface permanently seals out rust and corrosion. Looks like you fellas need some help. Linex. Serious protection. Killer looks. Only at Yipes. Visit our newest location, 8 Sheridan Avenue, Plattsburgh. It's March Madness at Handy Chevrolet. Come in and guess the number of basketballs inside the Chevy Aveo. And win a Panasonic 47-inch HD TV. Drawing is March 31st. And every Chevrolet is priced at crazy savings. This is March Madness. Save over $10,000. Buy a Silverado four-wheel drive for only $18,598. Save on pre-owned, too. Compare any Chevy deal from any Chevy deal. The price you get at Handy's will save you thousands. It's March 31st. The best price today is definitely at Handy Chevrolet. The golden hour. It's the critical hour following a heart attack, where every second counts. CVPH is bringing state-of-the-art cardiac care closer to home with the new Champlain Valley Heart Center. It's imperative that referring physicians can reach a heart specialist right away. That's why we chose Contact's answering service. 
their operators are professional and we receive our messages immediately, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you want to reach me, don't just page me, contact me. 23-19 Syracuse at halftime. We'll return to Worcester after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching CBS Sports. Exclusive coverage of the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. When you talk about important design features, the GMC Envoy can teach the imports a lesson. Because with a tighter turning radius and more horsepower than Honda Pilot, Toyota 4Runner, and Lexus RX 330, the Envoy is engineered to be in a class of its own. Now, qualified lessees lease a 2005 Envoy 4x4 SLE for around $289 a month. Call for residency restrictions and lease details. It's GMC's NCAA March Madness event. See your North Country GMC dealers. Hi, I'm Doug Whitaker from Superstore Furniture. We all know how important it is to get a good night's sleep. The answer, alternative bedding from the Superstore. Viscopedic memory foam and nature's finest latex mattresses will greatly cut down on pressure points that lead to tossing and turning. You'll wake up refreshed because you'll get a good night's sleep. Alternative bedding from the Superstore. The only thing you have to lose is another bad night's sleep. The Superstore, best service, no pressure, and no prices. So you finally got that pickup truck. Too bad you didn't buy a Line X ray on Bedliner. Line X's non slip surface permanently seals out rust and corrosion. Looks like you fellas need some help. Line X. Serious protection. Killer looks. Only at Yikes. Visit our newest location, 8 Sheridan Avenue, Plattsburgh. CBS.